Hi everyone, and you are welcome to Multi-Level Inheritance Relationship Lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the following scenario. Assume that you have an employee class, a developer class, and a team leader class. It's clear that team leader is just a developer, and developer is just an employee. So how to define these classes and how to define this relationship in Python are what we are going to talk about in this lecture. So let's get started. I'll start this lecture by a quick overview to the inheritance relationship types. Then we will talk about multi-level inheritance and we will see the syntax of this relationship type and at the end I'll end up this lecture by a quick summary. In a previous lecture, we have seen that we have four types of inheritance relationship and in this lecture mainly we are talking about multi-level inheritance type. As a quick reminder, in this relationship we have single child class and multi-level parents classes. And visually, we represent this relationship by the following diagram, in which we have one son, one father, and one grandfather class. Now let's see the syntax of this relationship. In other words, how I can implement this relationship inside Python. First of all, you have to define the grandparent class, and you have to add the required attributes and methods to this class. So for example, here we have atr1. You will do the same thing for the parent class, and the same thing for the child class. It's clear here that for the parent class, it should initialize the value of the grandparent class. And for this reason, it calls the constructor using grandparent class name class and then the init method. And also here, it's clear that the child class should initialize the value of the parent class. And for this reason, it calls its constructor by using parent class name and init method. You will note here that the parent class will pass only at one because this is all what grandparent class needs. And you will see that child class will pass atr1 and atr2 because this is all what we need parent class and don't forget that a part of what parent class need belongs to what grandparent class needs. You will see here that in order to define this relationship actually we have done something similar to what we have done before for single inheritance relationship. So to make parent class inherit a grandparent all what we have to do is adding this grandparent class name within parentheses after the parent class name. And to make child class inherits a parent class, also all what we have to do is just adding the name of this class within parentheses after the child class name. Now let's move to Jupyter Notebook in order to see a real example in Python programming language. To understand the example of multi-level inheritance relationship, let's start by reviewing the previous example which has been presented in single inheritance relationship lecture. In this example actually, we have two classes. The first one is employee and in this class we have two classes attributes, we have four instance attributes and we have three methods which are apply raise as an instance method, update raise as a class method and is workday as a static method. And if you remember we have another class which is developer class which inherits employee class. This class update the value of raise to be 1.3. It has its own constructor, which use exactly the same attribute as the employee class. And in addition to these attributes, we have programming languages as a list. Also, we add one instance method to this class, which is add new programming language. Now let's define the team leader class. So I'll say class team leader and I'll make this class inherits from the class developer. So we know that the team leader of developer's team should be at the end a developer. So for this reason team leader inherits developer. And let's say the raise for this team leader equal to 1.5 which is higher than 1.3 for the normal developer. Now let's define the constructor of this team leader. And as we know, the constructor of team leader should have all the attributes from the employee and also should have this list which represents the languages that this team leader knows. Also, the team leader should have a list of employees that he is leader for. So I'll say employees, which should be the list of employees that this team leader is leader for. So I can say self.employees equal to employees. And don't forget that you have to call the constructor of the parent class, which is in this case the developer class. And you have to pass all of these attributes to this constructor. Also, let's say that under this team leader, we should have a method like append employee, which allow me to add a new employee to the team. And this one should be employee object. And all what I have to do is self.employees.append that employee object. Also, let's say that under this team leader class, we should have print employees function to show me the list of employees that this team leader is leader for. And let's say I want to print the name of this employee and employee.lastName. 
quite simple function which will use for loop in order to loop over all the employees and print their names. All right, now let's define an object from this team leader class. Okay, so I'll say leader equal to team leader, John, though his name, 2000, his salary, and Python is the programming language that he knows. And for the employee, let's say he has an empty list of employees for now. Let's try to see his salary before and after applying raise. And apply raise is the following method here. And let's print. So you will see that before the raise is 2000 and after applying the raise is 3000. And it's clear that we use this value to apply the raise for this class. Now let's define a developer one and let's say he is a developer. His name is Jack Ma, let's say. His salary is 1000 and also he knows Python. And the other developer that we have, let's say his name Mark Ma and his salary 1200. Now, after I define two developers, I can append these two developers to my leader. So I can say append employee developer one and then append the second developer. So now I know that in this team, I have two developers. How to verify that? I'll say leader.print employees. If I run, you will see the name of the first one is Jack Ma and the second one is Mark Ma. So if you want to apply multi-level inheritance relationship, you will define the grandparent class, which is employee in this case. And this grandparent will be inherited from the parent class, which is developer. And then you will define the son class, which is team leader, which inherits the parent class. And now here, if I come to this location and if I say leader.tab, you will see now that this leader class or this leader object has access to all methods and attributes of the parents and grandparents. In other words, to developer class and to the employee class. And that's all. Thank you so much for your time. That's all for this lecture. Now let's recap what we have learned so far. In this lecture, mainly we have talked about multi-level inheritance, and we see that in this relationship we have a single child class and multi-level parents classes. In order to define this relationship, you have to use the following syntax, in which we have, as you see here, three classes. And what you have to pay attention to that child class, we are calling the constructor of the parent class, and in the parent class, we are calling the constructor of the grandparent class. Now, please, I need you to refer to the challenges available in the lecture resources in order to practice what you have learned so far. Thank you so much for your time, and if you are available, join me in the next lecture.